All right, everybody, back in the shop. I've got the head off that 258 AMC that the last video we did that, a couple sleeves on that block here. We're gonna go through and we're gonna do the entire valve job. We are gonna be putting new valves in these heads, all new exhaust valves, all new intake valves. So we wanna make sure that we get in the correct range for our valve stem clearance. Measure the valve stem using our micrometer here. And we have a small hole bore gauge here. So I've gone ahead and set zero on this gauge to be what the valve stem is. And then we can go through and measure our current valve guides. What we're seeing is they're in the range of around 3 thousandths clearance. But as you get to the end there, that one actually wasn't too crazy bad. But we've got probably a thou and a half taper right there at the end. A little bit of wear on the exhaust side. One, two, three, four. Four thousandths plus of taper where this guide is worn out. So that's why we're going to be going through and putting in new valve guides. Here's one of the guides we're going to be using. Basically what we'll do is we'll drill out this hole and we'll press in these new guides. They are a press fit. And then we can accurately size the ID of these guides. Unfortunately, the drilling footage got lost, but here we're installing the new guides using the air driver, also using Goodson press fit lube to help aid in installation. If you don't use a lubricant, it's going to gall and you're not going to have good luck. The guides we use are kind of a universal fit, and in this case they're a bit too long, so the next step in the process is to trim them back down to the proper guide height, and in the same process I'll be cutting the tops of the guides for a positive valve stem seal. At this point we've got our new valve guides put in, we cut the top for positive valve stem seals. We've got between, you know, at the tightest we're right at around zero valve stem clearance, meaning we're, you know, exactly the same size as the valve stem and all the way up to around one and a half. So we're gonna take the diamond valve guide hone and we'll hone these out, get them uh, straight and round and sized. Probably gonna pick up on it tomorrow morning and we'll go from there. The diamond valve guide hone is also from Goodson and it's a fundamental piece of the valve job puzzle in my shop. In my experience, reamers just don't cut these hardened guides the way I want them to. And the valve guide is basically the foundation for cutting the seats accurately. So the ability to size down to the 10 thousandth of an inch is essential. Two and two or three tenths. We've got one broken bolt here. Hopefully it'll come out easy. Was tiny. They had it most of the way out. Huh. That's funny. With the guide work wrapped up on the TCM25, we move over to the Surti to work on the valve seats, starting with cutting the counter bores for the new exhaust seats. We have our seats picked out and we set our spindle stop on the machine so that we can cut to the correct depth. This machine uses a live pilot, which means the pilot is spinning in the valve guide during machining, and I like to run them as tight as possible for the best seat results, which means I do have to run a bit of lubricant on the pilot or it's going to seize. I also like to run coolant when I'm cutting seat counter bores, especially on a head like this where the seats were hardened from the factory. Um, I'm not sure if that's a flame hardening process or an induction hardening, but the cast iron itself is hard. It's just not as hard as a seat insert like the ones that we're getting ready to install. With all the seat counterbores cut, we're gonna be driving in the new seats with our driver, and I like to move to the floor for that. I'm not a real big fan of beating on the Surti because I know how much the fixture and the machine itself costs. So um, it's the floor for me, and we'll get them driven in. Alrighty, so we've got all of our exhaust seats in. Now we're gonna go in and we're going to refinish the seats, basically. Um, basically, we're gonna take our cutter, we're gonna cut the intake seats, then we'll go back and we'll cut the exhaust seats. We have a little bit of cleanup to do on the inside of the throat of the exhaust seats. But basically I've got a three angle cutting insert set up. This is a 30 degree seat for the intake valves and I am doing 60 thousandths wide. So what I've done is with my pilot, I've gone in and I've set up my cutter to the correct diameter just by kind of eyeballing it and matching what the seat currently is. If you're too small, you're not gonna clean up the seat all the way without burying it deep into the head. If you're too wide, you kind of get into a situation where you're not on the valve centered and everything. 
So basically I went in, set that diameter. I also went ahead and used this tool that basically I can put on the tooling here and I can look at where the angles are on our cutter and then I can put that on the valve and kind of compare. So I think it's in a good spot. We're gonna get started here with the intake seats and see if we can cut them and get them to clean up nicely. So I think you guys will be happy to know that my new phone has a really good camera so I can finally get some of these close-up shots on the machining itself that my GoPro wasn't as good at picking up. And you can really see the three different angles come in here, starting with the bottom angle, followed by the seat angle that actually seals, and then just a sliver of the top angle just like these had from the factory. I know I'm going to get the comments, yes it was trying to chatter a little bit as you can probably tell from the sound. I needed to either give it more pressure or slow down the RPM probably. So as I finished the cut, I gave it plenty of pressure, which helped us get that chatter-free seat that we're looking for. I did go ahead and check the seats with the runout gauge, and we were coming in around 6 tenths runout, which is more than reasonable on this. That's really what we're shooting for. They came out really, really nice. On cutting the exhaust seats, I first went in with a steep angle cutter to make a smoother transition from the new seat insert into the port. Once we did that, we put in the three angle insert with a 60 thousandths wide 45 degree seat to go ahead and cut the exhaust seats. The exhaust seats cut phenomenally well, so in no time at all the seats were finished up and I gave each one a check with the vacuum gauge, which is kind of a test to simulate how well the valve can seal. A little bit of leak down is normal because keep in mind there is clearance between the valve stem and the valve guide itself. So I was pretty happy with the results and we're ready to move on to getting this head surfaced. It's kind of what I anticipated here. We've got a little bit of funny business. This one's all cleaned up on the corner here cleaned up over here with the exception of a spot there on that cylinder. This is all cleaned up and it cleans off over here but nothing over here. So we're going to keep cutting. In general the goal is to take as little material off as possible just to get it flat again. So what we're doing here is just kind of making multiple passes usually around two thousandths of an inch at a time and then I'll do a half thou finish cut which gives it a nicer surface finish. I also surfaced the manifold surface, but the footage seems to be lost in the abyss. So we're gonna move straight on to the final wash in one of our spray cabinets. With the final rinse, I'm also making sure to rinse every single bolt hole, every port, and every passage in the head to make sure that any debris from the previous abrasive cleaning or from any of our machining is gone from the head. Finally, we're ready to move on to the assembly of the head and we're installing valves with a bit of assembly loop on the valve stems. These are SBI valves, Engine Pro valve springs, and we're reusing the spring retainers, but with new Pioneer valve keepers, as well as the positive Viton valve stem seals that we cut the guides for earlier in the video. While I was working on getting the head wrapped up, Dad was over in the assembly area getting the short block assembled so that as soon as the head was ready, we could get it set into place. And that nice blue Felpro gasket reminded me, don't forget to shop our website, jamesyonline.com, for all of your engine parts needs. So with that, we're pretty much getting close to having this little 258 wrapped up. Um, it was just a stock rebuild, nothing too crazy, so I didn't end up doing a complete video, but I hope you guys enjoyed watching the video of doing the block sleeving as well as the head. And we appreciate you guys watching, and we'll see you in the next one.